Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe. All right, today we're talking about two, topic 2.3 in IB physics involving work, power, and energy. So, learning objectives very quickly. Uh, I can just, by the end of this lesson, you will, will be able to discuss the conservation of total energy within energy transformations. And what we're talking about here is the conversion between kinetic potential and elastic energy. Uh, you'll be able to sketch and interpret force distance graphs, uh, determine work done, including cases where resistive force is acting, and you will also be able to solve problems involving power and quantitatively describe efficiency in energy transfers. Okay, so fundamental law of therm thermodynamics, energy cannot be created or destroyed, and you've probably seen this before. This has a number of implications including uh, the idea that mass cannot be created or destroyed, although it may be converted into energy and vice versa. Uh, for topic 2.3 though, we're mainly concerned about two implications. First, sum of energy entering and leaving a system will be zero. Additionally, potential kinetic and elastic energy uh, can be converted from one to the other, and we've already covered that point, okay? so. Let's talk about work. Uh, not this kind of work, although that kitty is working very hard. You can do it, kitty. Uh, no. Uh, instead, we're talking about the definition of work in relation to the definition of energy. So, energy has a very boring definition. And this is unfortunate because we think about things like nuclear explosions or the fusion reaction at the heart of the sun or galaxies colliding or uh, rocketry, um, but no, what we actually get for the definition of energy is just the ability to do work, and this seems a little depressing when you think about um, energy. Uh, <clears throat> we now need to define work, and work in its simplest form is just applied net force times displacement. So you have probably seen this definition in previous physics classes. Okay, so this is our energy, okay? The unit of work is the joule, and that is energy. So here we have a system where we have a box being dragged along by a force, and this force is being applied at an angle to the box, okay? And we'll see why that's important in a second. Uh, we drag the box along this axis, and this is our displacement, S, in IB physics. Okay, so the formula in your data booklet for work is given as work is equal to force times displacement times cosine of theta. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the net force applied to this system is given by a cosine function. And the reason why it's a cosine function is because we're looking at the horizontal component of force here and our horizontal component of force along this axis, along parallel to displacement, the horizontal component of force is adjacent to our angle. In other words, it's touching our angle. And that means uh, we have a cosine function in trigonometry. So applied net force is F cosine of theta. Okay, uh, just be aware that if we measure the angle differently, for example, if we measured it from the vertical, we'd instead be looking at a sine function. So you need to be careful with your cosine and sine functions and make sure that uh, you're familiar with how they work. I have some videos about vectors that I should probably put up at this point. Okay, uh, our work can be positive, negative, or zero. Um, we don't usually think of negative energy as a thing, but it can be useful in the context of work uh, because our force is directional. Remember, our force could be positive along the positive x-axis for displacement, or it could be negative uh, along the negative x-axis, okay? So that's why our work here, uh, thinking of our work in negative terms can be useful. Okay, if displacement is zero, the work done on a system is zero. Uh, keep that in mind for topic six when we're looking at uh, or orbital motion, circular motion, um, and particularly where objects are traveling in a circular path due to centripetal force. 
Okay, um, this also explains why objects remain in orbit despite having no additional energy put into the system. Uh, example, satellites or the moon. The moon doesn't have a little rocket on the back that keeps, uh, keeps pushing on it, but it remains in a relatively stable orbit around the Earth. Okay, uh, next we're going to look at force displacement graphs. So we have force, oops, uh, force on our y-axis, and we have displacement on our x-axis. And uh, what we're looking at here in calculus terms would be called an integral, okay? So we have a linear relationship between force and displacement, and it's increasing. And if we want to calculate the area, our integral in calculus terms, underneath uh, this line, then we need to calculate the area of a triangle. Okay, so one half uh, base displacement, change in displacement, times height, uh, our change in force. Okay, so there's the, the area of a triangle. Okay. Uh, the kinetic energy of an object will be given by one half mass times velocity squared. And you should be familiar with this equation at this, this time. So, uh, even though that's true, we need to define our variables, and there they are. Uh, if we want to change the kinetic energy of a particle, we have to do work on it, okay? So uh, what that means is that net work done on a particle will equal its change in kinetic energy. Um, and note that a change in kinetic energy could be from zero kinetic energy. We don't have to have a starting kinetic energy for this to be true. Okay, so net work is the amount of energy transferred to the object. Uh, here we see work done on a spring, and we have a similar relationship um, to what we saw before. In this case, x is going to be our extension, and uh, here we have our spring constant times x, and you may recognize this as Hooke's Law. Okay, so to calculate the work done on a spring, uh, we calculate the area of this triangle, and it will be one-half kx squared, okay? Uh, so you can see here we've got zero extension, and then we pull, we pull our spring out, uh, and we've applied force to the system. We keep pulling the spring out. We're applying more force to the system. And the amount of work done here is given by the change in displacement. Okay, uh, next we have, uh, sorry, this is just a description of what I just explained, including uh, a formula a little more concise, uh, concisely stated. So again, defining our variables, k is going to be our spring constant. Uh, and x will be our displacement in this case. Okay, um, so this formula then gives us the elastic potential energy that we can store in a spring according to Hooke's Law. Ta-da! Um, potential energy in a system will equal the maximum kinetic energy of a system, and that's generally going to be the case. Your maximum kinetic energy or your maximum gravitational potential energy or your maximum elastic potential energy is more often than not going to be the total energy of the system. Okay, next we're looking at gravitational potential energy. Falling objects have a force applied to them over a given distance, and that is work. So uh, if we lift an object vertically, we have to oppose the force of gravity over a a given distance, and again, that requires work. So the force of gravity is given by mg. The work done by or against gravity is called gravitational potential energy, and will be given by this formula, where we have a change in elastic potential energy being equal to mass times uh, gravitational acceleration times our change in height. Okay, so this is important. Uh, we have a change in height, we have a change in potential energy, and this is the sole variable that dictates this change in potential energy, assuming uh, g is constant. As we'll see in topic 10, uh, g is not always constant depending on how far we are 
from our body. Um, again, our change in gravitational potential energy could be positive or negative. And again, useful. Uh, our gravity only does work vertically. Uh, so here we see an object moving from this position to this position, uh, but our change in energy is solely based on the change in gravitational potential energy. Uh, it may require some work in some cases to move an object horizontally. Uh, for example, we may have to do work against friction, uh, but generally it's going to be smaller than our gravitational potential energy, and more often than not, we just neglect uh, the horizontal uh, energy involved, okay? Uh, in any case, gravity can only do work vertically. We can convert gravitational potential energy into horizontal kinetic energy. An example of this would be a water slide. So if, we're, we're, if we imagine this path as a water slide, uh, then we're going to have horizontal kinetic energy at the end of our slide. Another example would be a ramp. Speaking of ramps, here we have one. So we have an object with velocity here, which means that it has kinetic energy. Okay, so this kinetic energy, as we go up our ramp, is going to be transformed into gravitational potential energy. And if there's any kinetic energy left when the object hits the spring, then that kinetic energy is going to be stored as elastic potential energy. And it's important uh, that we recognize that this occurs over time. So at different points in time, we'll have different amounts of energy depending on where we are on the ramp, okay? Uh, our total, there's a bell, our total energy in the system will be constant though the entire time. And in this case, our total energy in the system is going to be equal to our initial kinetic energy. Okay, uh, so this is a common problem configuration in IB physics. Uh, there may be different variations of this, but uh, not unusual to see this. So the total energy of the system will be, again, equal to the sum of the three possible types of energy we've dealt with here, kinetic, elastic potential energy, and gravitational potential energy. So here's an equation for total energy in the system. Total energy in the system will be equal to the sum of those three energies. In this case, we're clearly ignoring something, and you could pause the video and think about it. I will hum the Jeopardy theme song. Okay, so you pause the video, you thought about it, and of course you realize that uh, we've ignored friction here. Uh, so heat and air resistance, uh, the friction between the surface of our box and the surface of the ramp. Uh, the spring is also going to uh, gain some kinetic energy. We're going to lose some heat here. So uh, if we wanted to, we could add a third term to this equation for the energy loss to uh, various frictions. Okay, next up we have power. What is power? <laughs> My favorite physics joke. Uh, power is the amount of work that can be done in a specific amount of time. Okay, so power then is equal to a change in work divided by a change in time. And the unit for power is the watt, where we have uh, one joule per one second. And we should note that the joule itself is composed of other SI units, including time. Uh, so we typically think of power in terms of heat or electricity, but it could be applied to any number of systems where we have a force being applied to an object or energy being lost over time. Okay, uh, so if we are applying a force to an object, then uh, we would have a change in work divided by a change in time, and a change in work is equal to force times a change in displacement, which is then divided by time, and that will be equal to force times velocity because change in displacement divided by change in time is, by definition, a velocity. Okay, finally we have efficiency. And efficiency is just a coefficient that tells us how much energy is lost from a system. It's defined two ways in mechanics. Uh, first, 
we have efficiency is equal to useful work out divided by useful work into a system, okay? So this is the work we get out of the system. We're always going to put more work into the system than we get out of it. And this is due to inevitable heat loss in the system. Next, we have efficiency equal to use for use, bleh, sorry, useful power out divided by useful power in. And we should recognize that uh, power is equal to work divided by time. And so this is actually just a slightly different form of the same equation. Okay, energy lost, again, due to friction, uh, perhaps air resistance. Um, there could be other things happening as well. Okay, here are my sources for this video. Uh, first, we have SOCOS Physics for the IB Diploma, my usual resource. Uh, we also have this Futurama. Actually, I, I didn't use this. Um, anyway, um, this presentation was prepared using Google Slides, Latex, Vectornator, and Adobe Illustrator. This has been Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized YouTube channel. Please do not click like or subscribe, I guess, unless you really have to. Okay, have a great day.